Hey, my loves, today we are going to make some delicious fall-off-the-bone barbecue oven ribs. And we're also going to make some delicious garlicky fried cabbage with string beans. I know you're going to love this, so stay tuned. Baby, I'm back. Baby, I'm back. Yes, honey. We're going to make these delicious oven barbecued ribs, honey. They're succulent. They fall off the bone. And I'm going to show you how I make them. So, my loves, we have about three and a half pounds of pork ribs here. Okay. Um, we're going to clean it up, wash it, of course. I always told y'all, wash your meats, okay? Or people will talk about you, okay? So, this is about three and a half pounds of... Um, some pork ribs and now we are going to need some seasoning um i have some green seasoning here this is optional you really don't need this i'm just putting it in there It'll give me a little bit of extra flavor but it's not gonna break it if you don't have it okay so this is optional okay but if you have that green seasoning use it all right and we're gonna need some black pepper because we're gonna make a uh I'm gonna make a mix here of a dry and wet rub. I have some um, cow from Chicago steak seasoning. I have some sa um, sazon, achiote con culantro. I have some cowboy seasoning. I think this is by Wagner's. I'll get the name for you guys. We have some chicken bouillon powder, okay, that we're gonna add to this. We have some garlic powder, garlic 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 I love garlic love it okay and we're gonna need some mustard okay some good old French's mustard okay any mustard that you have but I'm using old-fashioned yellow mustard okay and we're gonna need some vinegar so we could clean this bad boy okay it's very important to clean your meats and I'm gonna give you a little um, view of how to do that and we're gonna need some, I'm gonna use some uh, um, sweet baby raised barbecue sauce. I love this. This is so good. Oh my god. I love that barbecue sauce, but any barbecue sauce you want. I have some light brown sugar Okay as well. All right Now that's for our barbecue ribs. Okay. Now we're gonna make our fried cabbage Okay with um, string beans. So I have uh, about, I think this is a medium sized cabbage because I'm making a lot of fried cabbage here with string beans. All right, you're gonna need some fresh garlic. Okay, I like fresh garlic. I don't like the ones in the jars with that oil. I don't like it. It just, it tastes nasty to me. So I'm using a nice big bulb of garlic. I have a 16 ounce bag of green beans. I love green beans, love my veggies. And this is gonna make a great side. This is a great side dish. Okay, I have some rice wine vinegar. All right, if you don't have rice wine vinegar, I guess you could use squeeze a little lime or lemon juice in there as well. Um, maybe a little apple cider. You don't need as much of it, okay? You're gonna need some sugar, okay? And you're gonna need some sesame oil. And guys, I forgot to put, you're also gonna need some olive oil or canola oil. Okay, and of course you're gonna need salt and pepper. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, so my loves, we are now preparing our ribs. I got this soaking in some water with some vinegar for a little bit, just so it can loosen all that grit up so we can get to work and clean it later. Okay, now my loves, we are gonna to put together this rub for our ribs, all right? I have about, I have some, um, light brown sugar, I have some black pepper, and don't worry my loves, the ingredients are listed in the description box below. Okay, I'm using some sazon packets. This is the one with culantro, achiote con culantro. Okay. And we're going to use some of our chicken bouillon powder here, which is excellent. I really love the flavor of this. Really love it. 
Okay, I'm using some garlic powder. All right. I mean, I love garlic. Garlic is something I love. I can't live without it, okay? But um, don't worry, I'm giving you the measurements to this, guys. Now we're using some Weber's Cowboy Seasoning, okay? I love these. I just discovered these seasonings. I know they've been out for a minute, but I found this at Sam's Club, and I said, let me try it, and they are absolutely delicious, okay? Don't worry, this might seem like a lot of salt, but it's not, guys. Um, if you have any of this rub left over, you could also, you know, um, save it and put it away for other uses. Um, now we have some, um, that's my garlicky cowboy seasoning. I like this one. It's really, really good too. All right. Now we're going to mix this together. Okay. I'm using a whisk, but then I said, you know what? I want to make sure I break up any lumps. Okay. So I'm going to eventually use my hands, which are clean. Make sure your hands are clean, get up under those nails and clean. Make sure they're nice and clean. And we're just gonna use our hands to mix this together. Now with this rug, guys, if you have any of this left over, what you could do is store it away in an airtight container. You could put this on your fish. You could put this rub on um, steaks. Um, any other meats, you know, it's really, really good. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more black pepper. Yeah, and you could use it on your chicken. So it's an easy, quick rub that you'll have at hand, ready to use to season any of your meats. Okay, I, I think it's absolutely delicious. I just threw it together and it is absolutely delicious. Okay, so we got that to the side. Now, guys, I'm going to fish. I have this soaking in some lemon. And, I mean, I'm sorry, some vinegar. But you have lemon as well. Use that. I'm going to cut away some of that fat. Okay? You don't want to cut off all the fat. But you want to get rid of some of it. You know, just to clean it up and make it look a little bit more cleaner. <laughs> okay? So I'm just cutting off some of that excess fat, as you see. All right, and I'm speeding up the process here. And guys, in the corner, there is a membrane, a thin sheet-like membrane. I'm using the scissor to help me loosen it up. That's on the back here, okay? And you'll be able to pull that membrane off. It just helps when the ribs are baking, they won't curl up. Okay, when you know the rack of rib won't um, curl up, so I'm just using like a sharp knife or a pair of scissors to um, be able to access it. Okay, as you can see, I was able to put my fingers under that membrane and I'm just pulling back. I'm just gonna pull it, just it, it kind of just rips off. Okay. If it's slippery, guys, you can take a piece of paper towel to pull it off. See that? Okay. We just want to really just clean this up. Okay, because clean food is good food. Okay, clean your food. And trust me. People won't be afraid to eat from you. I know some, a lot of us are finicky about eating from everybody, but this is what I do. You know, so important. And if you've been following me for a long time, you will see that everything I'm always kicking, especially anything with meat, you know, I'm kicking out my lemon and my vinegar. So guys, as you can see, I'm taking the scissors and there was a big blob of fat right there, a thick layer of it. So I'm just, you know, taking a pair of shears and cutting that excess fat off because we don't need all of that fat. But you do need a little bit of fat just to keep it moist and add a little flavor, but not but so much. You don't need a lot of it. Okay, and that lemon and that vinegar, and for some reason I find not only that it just kills anything that's not, the, the acidity will help clean and, and loosen some of that fat, of course, too, believe it or not, because you'll see it floating on the um, surface of the water. And of course, we're rinsing it well. I'm rinsing this, believe it or not, under warm water because it really helps loosen up a lot of that grit. And 
and that's you see so as you can see the meat looks brighter cleaner see what I'm saying and that's what you want okay and the water is not as bloody looking and cloudy looking you know this is what you want this is what's good and not only that but your food is gonna taste better all that you don't have to clean your meat and take it straight out of the pack and put it on the stove we ain't doing that here okay now on this channel all right so my loves we are lining a pan here with some aluminum foil okay and um, I'm just gonna get um, a paper towel so I could just dab off any extra excess water that may be on my rack of ribs here okay flipping it on the other side just want to get off any excess water now guys some people don't like putting must don't want to put mustard they just go straight for the rub fine but I like it because to me it helps stick the um, flavor the powdered ribs on I mean the powder on the oh my god Jackie anyway my mind is all over the place anyway we're adding some mustard in my green seasoning and I was saying before with the mustard, it just helps bind the dry ingredients on the ribs. But some people don't put mustard, they just put the um, dry ingredients on, okay? But I like putting it on because I like the taste of the mustard, okay? And a little bit of that acidity that it adds to your pork as well, okay? And remember what I said, the green seasoning is optional. But if you have it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's you know, it won't hurt. Okay, now I'm adding some on the other side. We want to ensure that our ribs have beautiful flavor. Okay, and I'm all about flavor, my loves. I am all about flavor. I'm all about seasoning my foods well. Don't be afraid to season your foods. Now, as you can see in that dried rub I made earlier, guys, don't be afraid to season your foods. What you really gotta be careful is how much salt you add. But again, the rub that I made, you don't have to add all of it, okay? Um, whatever you have left over, add it accordingly to the size of your ribs, okay? Um, so I'm adding you know I'm sprinkling some on okay and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pat it on okay I'm gonna pat it on because I want it to penetrate into the meat all right I'm just patting it on all right and we're doing a speed motion here so you can see what we're doing Okay, I'm also going for the sides. And we're just patting it on. And we're going to do the same on the other side, my loves. Okay, take some of that and pat it on. You know, just sprinkle a little bit on. All right. Make sure you cover the sides as well. And what we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna leave this on the counter and we're gonna let that penetrate. I let it penetrate for at least 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, because I just wanted that seasoning to penetrate into my ribs, okay? Now, 45 minutes is up. I'm taking my aluminum, another piece of aluminum foil, and we're sealing our ribs in this packet. And I'm going to bake this low and slow. Okay, I had this bacon, believe it or not, at 325 degrees, and I baked it for four hours on 325 degrees, and by sealing it in, in that aluminum foil, it's going to create a nice steam, and it was caramelizing as well. Okay, now we're going to put this in the oven, low and slow, 325, and come back. So now, honey, we are working on our beautiful fried cabbage a garlicky fried cabbage with string beans all right so i just took peeled off the outer layers of that cabbage okay and we're just shredding the cabbage into nice pieces okay however you like your cabbage but i like you know i like to shred it 
okay? And this is like about a, I think a medium sized cabbage. All right, and now we're gonna clean the cabbage. There's nothing wrong with a little water, okay? For some of y'all that don't like to clean y'all food, Jackie's gonna talk to y'all and she's teaching y'all how to clean stuff, okay? It doesn't hurt to add a little water. These are vegetables. You know, they come from the ground. People are handling them, so there's nothing wrong with putting a little water just to ensure there's no grit of dirt or soil, what have you, in our vegetables, okay? Under some cold water. All right, now I'm taking my garlic, guys. As you can see, I took a whole big bowl of garlic. I love lots of garlic because I'm making a good amount of this, okay? And I'm going old school on y'all here. I peeled my, my garlic and I'm going old school with the pestle and mortar, okay? This is a good, um, this is, if y'all Caribbean, you know what time it is, okay? <laughs> and we're just, we're not pulverizing it, but I just want to crush it a little bit just to release the oils out of that garlic, okay? Yeah, baby, I'm going way back. Yeah, you probably like Jackie, come on now, but listen, I love the old school stuff, nothing wrong. So now guys, I'm adding a little bit of olive oil to my um, pot here. Um, if you don't have olive oil, you can use canola oil. I'm using a little olive oil and I'm gonna add some of that sesame oil. That sesame oil is gonna, oh my God, it is so good. It just gives it that little nutty taste. Okay, and I'm gonna let my oil get hot a little bit and as it's getting hot, I'm adding my garlic. Because what I want to do is I want to infuse the garlic in the oil. Okay? You want the oils from the garlic to be infused in the sesame and olive oil as well. Alright? And I'm doing this on medium heat. You do not want to burn your garlic. Do not burn your garlic. It's okay if it gets a little toasty brown. But do not let it get black. Or it's going to get bitter and it's not going to taste good. Okay? We don't want that. I'm making sure I take out all that garlic. And it smells impeccable in this kitchen, let me tell you. All right, let's infuse and saute our beautiful garlic. Okay, now that our garlic has been infused and has a little toastiness to it, okay. I'll get it nice and sauteed here. Oh God, the smell of garlic. God knows what they were doing, let me tell you. All right, so now we are going, we got that nice and toasted. We're gonna add our string beans. It's a 16 ounce bag of string beans. And we're gonna toss that in, the, in our garlic and oil. Now, if you just want garlic and string beans, whoa, you don't even have to add the cabbage if you don't want. This makes a great side dish, what I'm making here. It makes a delicious side dish. Now we're adding our cabbage. It makes a great side dish for any occasion. Now we're adding our clean shredded cabbage. All right, and we're tossing that in our beautiful oil and garlic. Okay. We're coating this nicely. And don't worry, my loves, what's gonna happen, um, the, cat, the cabbage is gonna eventually shrivel up. Okay? <clears throat> so don't worry, it's eventually gonna shrivel up. All right, now we're gonna add our seasoning. I'm adding some chicken bouillon um, seasoning and some black pepper, that's it. Okay, if you don't have the chicken bouillon flavor, fine. You could just add regular old fashioned white table, um, some table salt, what have you. But I'm, I like the chicken bouillon flavor in this, okay? 
And we're just going to toss that. Okay. And now we're going to add some sugar. The sugar is going to balance the acidity that is going to come from the um, rice wine vinegar. And now we're adding our rice wine vinegar. Oh, you need a little bit, but because I have quite a, a bit here, about three teaspoons is fine. And we're going to toss that. You're gonna love this, guys. You're gonna love this. I love it, love it, love it. So good. All right. Now we're gonna finish tossing a little bit and we're gonna cover this and let it finish cooking. I let it cook for at least about 15, 20 minutes. Um, now this depends on what texture you like. I like a little crunch and bite to mine. All right, but if you want it cooked a little bit more, you could let it cook a little bit more. But I like my, my cabbage and, and, and my string beans have a little texture, a little bite to it, okay? A little crunch, okay? So this is good enough for me right here, all right? Um, if you want to add a little bit more black pepper, go ahead, knock yourself out, guys, all right? So let's get back to our ribs, guys. So this is after two hours, guys. Um, as you can see, the, it started caramelizing, okay? No, I think this is after three. I'm sorry. Because I had this in the oven, but it's already fallen off the bone. It became so delicate. Okay, so this is after what, two and a half, three hours. Okay. All right. Now, what I should have done, guys, before I flipped it over, I should have just put some of that barbecue sauce on that bag before I flipped it because I didn't want to flip it too much. But anyway, at this point, you could add your favorite barbecue sauce. You know, I'm just going to add just enough of this sweet baby rays. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to press that notification bell, okay, so you could get notified of weekly videos of my postings okay and like give me a thumbs up and share and let everybody know about miss jackie okay because jackie be cooking it up okay all right so we're just brushing on our barbecue sauce here i just like to put enough so now i'm flipping it over you know, which I should have put the sauce on again. I should have put the sauce on first before I flipped it. But listen, so I'm putting the sauce on the other side because I had put it back in the oven. Now I'm facing the other side. I'm going to put it back in the oven. Okay, for about 10, 10, 15 more minutes. Okay, did that. Now we took it out, guys. And now we're going to let it rest for at least 20 minutes, slightly covered. Okay, so we can let everything, all them juices settle in. All right. And now this is our dish, my love, with our delicious garlicky sauteed fried cabbage with green beans, string beans. And we have our yellow rice, our potato with sour cream, and our ribs. Love, you better enjoy life, and you better eat, love, and pray. Until next time.